I don't think I have to remind you just how disastrous the launch of Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy Definitive Edition was. The game released in such a piss poor state that it very quickly became one of the worst user rated games on Metacritic. What we got was a very compromised package and that makes Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition, if we don't count the duplicates here, the fourth worst user rated game ever on Metacritic. It goes without saying that the launch of Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition didn't go down well, especially because of the way the game was marketed. They showed all of the best shots in the trailer, leaving out all of the flaws. And this collection's disastrous launch is especially poetic, given that Take-Two's own CEO, the CEO of the parent company of Rockstar, came out and said that he's not interested in simple ports. Take-Two says Rockstar can't deliver a great experience by just doing a simple port. A simple port of the classics would have been better than what we got now. The whole point of a remaster is to bolster the classics. It's supposed to bring it into the modern era while maintaining the original experience, but uh, this new remaster is more of a reforged type of situation where it is somehow worse than the originals. If you want the definitive experience, this thing's called the definitive edition, but if you actually want the definitive experience, play the classics because the so-called definitive version is way too compromised for it to be anywhere near the ballpark of Definitive. And this whole situation is also rich given Take-Two CEO's criticism of Cyberpunk 2077's launch. Scrolling down, you'll find the exact quote that he put out. I think the case you're alluding to reflects the fact that you're always better served to wait for perfection if you can create perfection and all of our labels are seeking perfection. He's basically saying a game should only come out when it's ready and yet look how he decided to launch. Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, definitive edition. Then again, Straw Zelnick has always been full of crap, as is the case with many game companies CEOs. They talk the talk, but they never walk the walk and are always hypocrites, as well as liars and deceivers who, even when the jig is up, will continue to insist that the situation isn't as bad as it seems. They'll try to downplay a grave situation and bury the issues under the rug, which is exactly what Strauss Zelnick Take 2 CEO tried to do when speaking to New Salad CNBC on January 10th, 2022. He was asked a number of questions about the future of Take 2 and Rockstar, and chief among the questions that came up was, there have been some defects in the new Grand Theft Auto. You have always held this. We're not going to put out any game before its time mentality. Indeed, that is exactly what he implied when he said that you're always better served to wait for perfection if you can create perfection. But obviously, as a scummy, greedy CEO of a scummy company, of course, his number one priority will always be financial elements will always be money will always be revenue and profits and keeping investors happy but specifically on the topic of gta trilogy when he was put on the spotlight about the state of the game and how strauss zelnick previously emphasized perfection for game releases or giving projects as much time as they need his response was first of all with regards to gta trilogy that was actually not a new title that was a remaster of pre-existing titles do you think that's helping your case the fact that you didn't botch a brand new game but a remaster of old classics which should have been a home run endeavor that makes all of this look that much worse you should have had this in the bag and i'm not saying that remastering a game especially three games at once is easy but given enough time it certainly should be possible to output something of much higher quality than trilogy definitive edition did just look at what bioware did with mass effect legendary edition that was an awesome package that remastered exactly what it needed to remaster and was a great package of three games and all of their dlcs for a reasonable price and Everything worked well enough. A few hitches here and there, a few bugs here and there. No game is 100% perfect, but it worked well enough, which the Trilogy Definitive Edition didn't. Strauss Zelnick then added the quote that's pissing a lot of people off where he downplays this whole situation. We did have a glitch in the beginning. Just one little simple glitch. Not a big deal. That glitch was resolved, he says, and he touts the financial success of the game. The title has done just great for the company, so we're very excited. We have an amazing pipeline going forward. As long as it does great for the company, right? As long as you milk the wallets of players who were deceived and led to believe that they were going to get 
a far better experience than what actually shipped. With a remaster or a definitive edition, the baseline should be it's at least as good as the originals, but even then, that's not enough. It needs to go above and beyond the originals. Otherwise, it cannot justify its definitive edition name or its remastered name. And somehow, Trilogy Definitive Edition couldn't even meet baseline. Not to say there aren't any enhancements, but there are enough flaws and negative elements that uh, we are below baseline for sure. And this guy says that the so-called glitch, as he calls the disastrous state the game was in, has been fixed. And while there have been certain patches and updates over the past few weeks and months that have resolved certain issues, the game, the series of games, the collection is still far from in an ideal state, it's far still from the definitive edition that it promised itself to be. And to remind you what an understatement, calling the disastrous launch of this collection just a glitch that has allegedly been resolved, I'll direct you to this image right here that highlights just some, the tip of the iceberg of issues revolving around this game, namely where character models are involved or textures and visual elements like how this gun is not being held correctly. Just uh, models, textures, animations, various things just look incredibly off. Some stuff has been resolved, but there's plenty that hasn't. And I've got, I mean, a bullet list here of things that this package completely screwed up that Straw Zelnik is downplaying as just a glitch. Broken object and character models, especially with the new art style and art direction that makes characters look way off. The introduction of various janky animations, generally underwhelming graphics. Again, the misguided Simsified art style doesn't help matters. Modders have done a much better job at remastering graphics for these old classics. Wonky and out of control physics. Still, if you're driving and you nudge a little thing, you go flying into the air and get shot into the frickin' moon, basically, among other situations where physics just get all kinds of wonky and occasionally happening here and there. It's kind of funny, but it happens frequent enough that it's disruptive. Lack of fog, do you remember that? That drastically diminished the atmosphere of the game and the visual cohesiveness in the open world with distant objects being way too visible. So it just made the open world look a lot smaller and you could see just way too much details that you weren't meant to see in the distance. A large contributor to why GTA Trilogy's graphics were so botched was the overuse of AI upscaling that messed up various textures and graphical elements. AI can be a good tool, but you have to touch up what the AI upscales because AI isn't perfect. And with this release, it just feels like they barely touched up the game after AI upscaling. Disruptive visuals like invisible bridges and blinding rain. Do you remember the rain that this game originally launched with? It has since been patched to something significantly better. And same with the fog. They did add the fog back in after a couple of weeks. But I don't know how such an issue wasn't detected or corrected or rectified before launch. You just expect a lot better out of Rockstar, especially when this is supposed to be a celebration of a seminal series, a seminal series of games and classics at that. But this release was just a pure disrespect to the legacy of these games is what many fans felt. Made worse by the fact that this so-called definitive edition was based off of the shoddy mobile ports. And so it inherits all of the flaws for a number of reasons. The mobile ports are considered to be inferior from the classics and they decide to use those as the foundation for what's supposed to be the definitive edition. It made no sense. Then there is performance issues with this game, especially with the terribly and poorly optimized Switch port, which should not have been released at all, given how stuttery it is. And then you got cherries on top, like the removal of the superior classic versions of the game. They wanted players to strictly play the definitive, or I should say the reforged version of this Grand Theft Auto trilogy as the default, remove everything that came before, but like if you're going to do that, at least actually make a superior version of those games that whose classic versions you're removing, but they couldn't even manage that. On top of that, their treatment of the modding community who did a better job remastering these games. It's almost as if Take-Two and Rockstar were insecure about their ability to do better than modders, so they attacked the modders and took them down so that they could garner a more positive image with the definitive edition, and they think that the mods will somehow affect the sales when people are gonna buy the official version. Anyway, they have to purchase the classic version they actually want to mod the game and they would also have to purchase the definitive edition to mod 
this version of these games. So it's just awful logic and even worse optics. And the PC version in particular was delisted at one point because the Rockstar launcher was broken for some time following the game's launch. And then there was also the inclusion of unintended files like unlicensed music and hot coffee remnants. And this is just a summary of all of the issues that plagued GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition's launch. This isn't even the long version. If you want the long version, there are plenty of videos that I've already made about this game, but calling everything that I just mentioned, reducing all of that to a glitch in the beginning that has been resolved. I mean, lies don't get any more blatant than this. And the community is not having any of this. They already feel duped enough at the state of this product that was supposed to be a seminal re-release of old classics. But now Strazonic is insulting the community's intelligence by spouting this nonsense that it doesn't take much to disprove, given that the game's out. People have gotten their hands on it. They've posted their experience, posted videos and screenshots showing just how disastrously this title was released. And so it goes without saying that Straw Zelnick faced quite a bit of backlash on social media. He does have a Twitter account, which used to be public, but has since been made private. These tweets are protected. Only approved followers can see Straw Zelnick's tweets. As for the kinds of posts, messages, and responses that he received, going back to this Game Rant article, if we scroll down, we can see a screenshot of some of the responses before the Twitter page was made private by Straw Zelnick, people saying stuff like, your lies are a glitch that has yet to be resolved. I mean, cannot say I disagree there. Holy crap, look at these comments. Everybody hates you. The GTA trilogy had a glitch. Are you freaking slow? Those games are still riddled with numerous glitches. What an idiotic thing to say. And then there's somebody here saying, save Red Dead, a hashtag that got trending because Take-Two and Rockstar are clearly pulling focus away from Red Dead Online because it's not as financially successful as GTA Online, breaking their promise that Red Dead Online would be a thriving live service with consistent and constant updates and content additions, but slowly support for this game seems to be dying out. And then last but not least, we have Rockstar Games was the best game industry back then before you ruined it, you sack of beep. There are those, of course, that are just issuing insults and threats and all these things, and I don't think that is the correct approach, though obviously it's hard to be sympathetic about this multi-millionaire CEO who continuously does one scummy thing after another. Criticisms and backlash against Strauss Zelnick for giving out that insulting statement is completely warranted. There is literally zero signs of remorse on the part of Strauss Zelnick. Zero apologies, just calls it a little glitch that got resolved. Him not acknowledging that the troubled launch of GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition was as troubled as it actually was might as well be a middle finger to paying customers, might as well be a middle finger to their feedback, their criticisms, which is why if you go to forums like Reddit, you'll find people highlighting this statement by Strauss Zelnick and calling him a liar. And this is a post that has a 99% approval rate. People are near universal agreement that Strauss Zelnick clearly doesn't want to take responsibility and only wants to bury this whole situation under the rug, which is a specialty of scumbag CEOs. And people are still waiting for more patches and updates, but it doesn't seem like Take-Two and Rockstar are really communicating all that much or really showing any signs that they're intending to keep updating this game and keep fixing it. Am I the only one that thinks Rockstar or whoever are responsible for updates are done patching the trilogy remasters because it's been so long since we've heard from the team about the next update? And this post got a decent amount of upvotes and a pretty high upvote ratio. And you got people responding that, yeah, that's probably what the case is right now. You're probably right. The last update was about a month and a half back, and there hasn't been any word since. And scrolling further down, when somebody asked about whether this game was worth buying now in its current state after some of the updates that came out post-launch. One of the responses reads, just barely, the physics are still wonky as hell and glitches galore, but it's playable at this point. But the thing is, this isn't GTA Trilogy, the playable edition. This is GTA Trilogy, the definitive edition. 
Just making the game playable isn't where Rockstar should stop at with this package. They should keep going until the package lives up to its definitive edition name. It even fails to rise above the old classics in many respects. And from the looks of things, with how much communication and update releases have slowed down, and with Strauss Zelnick insisting that the so-called glitch, that the issue surrounding this remaster collection has been resolved, and that everything's amazing and acting like it's all sunshine and rainbows. I don't get the sense that he's really committed to continuing to fix this package that he insists is in a great shape. He got the money from the people. It isn't a live service, so who cares? It looks like it'll be up to modders to pick up Take-Two and Rockstar Slack if Take-Two and Rockstar even let them if they don't copyright modders and take down their projects and threaten lawsuits for bolstering an experience that they failed to make definitive despite what they marketed and promised. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, everything you need to know about the latest developments surrounding GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition, namely Strauss Zelnick's awful, idiotic, uh, deceit-ridden statement. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on what Strauss Zelnick said and the current state of the game and the likelihood that this game's not going to get updated frequently. And if you are playing GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition, how you feel the state of the game is at right now from how it was at launch, whether it's enough for you or whether you think there's still a lot of work left to be done. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.